Hey, Elliot, welcome to the show. Good to be here, Tom. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely. So if those of you who haven't met Elliot yet, Elliot Katz is the best-selling author of Being the Strong Man a Woman Wants and six other nonfiction books. He is a professional speechwriter and has written on a wide range of subjects from the outdoors to the economy to how to stimulate ideas and innovation in the workplace. Thanks for being here, Elliot. Good to be here. Yeah. So tell us about your background, how you got started as an author. Well, I've been writing for a long time, and uh, a lot of the books I, I've written were about the outdoors. The first uh, six were actually about the outdoors. And then I came to uh, write this book, my latest one, which, uh, Being the Strong Man and Woman Wants, Timeless Wisdom on Being a Man. And I came to write it. You know, it's sort of one of those books, a result of my own journey of learning. You know, I was married, and I got divorced. And then, uh, you know, after the period that most people go through of blaming other people, I asked myself, what do I have to learn from this? And I went on this journey of learning, and I, I learned there's a lot of things that men need to learn that that just doesn't come naturally to them, and a lot of that a lot of men of this generation just weren't taught. You know, a lot of men grow up, guys who grow up without fathers, or or their fathers work long hours. So I put it together in this book, and uh, the interesting thing was at first I really wrote it for myself and my friends, and then I realized this was real, a lot of men in North America were uh, in similar situations, and then I you know I published the book. In English, and then I started getting approached by. I got approached by a publisher in Poland and one in Mexico, and I thought they were interested in the book. And I thought, wow, well, I would have thought I had sort of had this idea that men in other cultures, you know, were, were, were had already knew these things. So that's what put me on a track of realizing, well, my goal is to change the men of the world, and, and that means all the men, not just the ones that read English. So I started approaching. Uh, lo looking at selling foreign rights, and I started approaching foreign rights agents and around the world and i was just amazed by the interest so ultimately i sold the book has been translated to 24 languages by publisher and in asia europe latin america africa countries where you thought you know like in japan where you figure every man has a geisha you know it's sold, published by a big publisher there and in russia and the ukraine where you think they're very traditional i come to realize these are insights that really men have to learn if they and that they if they're not taught and they're usually taught by their father or another uh, older male role model, but if they're not, it's, they have to learn it some other way, and that's really the goal of my book. And, and I've got all kinds of emails from around the world from people saying, you know, it's it saved their relationship, it saved their marriage, or people who are divorced who said, well, if I would have read this book a year ago, I'd probably still be married, or or from women who said, you know, if I, my husband understood these ideas that our marriage would not have disintegrated. So it's been very rewarding, and the idea is like, you know, we all want to make a difference, and we want to make a difference in the world. This is what I've been doing, trying to save relationships and improve marriages around the world. Hmm. That's awesome. So how did you get started with this book? Was it self-published, or did you have a publisher in the USA? No, I, I, I published it myself. I, I, uh, I, you know, I, like among the other books, I, like I told you, I started out writing books about the outdoors, and they were the first books were published by uh, pretty big publishers. And then I came to thinking, well, you know, I remember just all the effort I put into pushing the publisher to promote my book, and I thought, you know, it'd be easier if I just put that same energy into promoting it myself. And so that, that was really what put me onto publishing the book myself. And, uh, you know, the, one of the first books I published myself was actually on the local bestseller list. So I, I realized it's really not that hard. I mean, and the interesting thing about books is it's not like, um, it's not like toothpaste, you know, where people buy a certain brand. You know, people look at, they look at the cover of the book and they look for a book that's quality. They don't really judge a book by the publisher. So you put out a quality book that looks good, that looks professional, people will buy it if they think it's going to help them. I mean, right? Like this book is aimed at helping people. They say they don't know oh, who published it or was it, you know, Random House or or Macmillan. No, they they see this book looks like it can help me. I'm going to read it. Hmm, absolutely. So, okay, let's talk a little bit more about your foreign language rights deals. Um, can you kind of explain how those deals work for someone who's listening who's, you know, has no idea uh, how that side of the industry works? Well, okay, let's just talk about the advantages of foreign rights deals. I, I see three main advantages. First of all, it's another revenue stream if you're, you know, if you're selling your book. It's also, um, you know, reaching, you know, people want to make a difference in the world. They want to share their ideas. It's a way of reaching that part of the world that doesn't read English. And also, when you sell foreign rights, it gives your book more credibility at home because you know you always see the big publishers they'll promote their books, translate into ten languages, translate into twelve languages. It gives the book more credibility. So, 
when I, you know, one of, one of the advantages of with the internet and email is it's made the, the world so much easier to access, right? You know, in the old days, there were, you know, there are um, like book fairs, like there's the Frankfurt Book Fair and the London Book Fair and Book Expo America, where, you know, you, you, you can rent a booth or you can go with like a co-op booth. I mean, those co-op booths are helpful, but, you know, there's, if, if there's, a, there's an expense of that or, or if you just want to start sending out your book to, to publishers and agents, it's expensive. But now, you know, it, it, with the internet, it's so much easier to find um, foreign rights agents. So that's, that's how I did most of these sales. There are agents in most countries, in many countries, where they're, what they do is they take books published in the United States, Canada, Great Britain, and they sell foreign rights to publishers in their country. And to find them, just go to Google and Google foreign rights agents. And among all the things that will come up are major publishers and major literary agents that will list the foreign rights agents that they work with. So let's say, you know, Simon & Schuster, if you're a publisher in Japan and you, you go to their site and you're interested in publishing their book in Japan, you, you would contact our foreign rights agents in Japan. But the advantage is these, these um, pages give all, all their contact information. So that's really, the first thing is like research and get a good list of all these foreign rights agents. Then write a really exciting email pitching your book. And the advantage of, you know, a email is, you know, unlike when you go to a book fair, if you have your book at a co-op, they just have the book. In an email, you can, you know, include reviews of your book, include links to television interviews about your book. You can include uh, radio interviews, all kinds of stuff that, that really make the email exciting. And, and the idea is to sell your book to the agent so that he wants to represent that book in, in, in their country. So once you have that uh, email done, then send it to all these email foreign rights agents. And, and you know, it hasn't cost you anything yet, right? You're just sending out an email. And, you know, I've sent out, I must have approached, you know, several hundred agents and maybe 200 agents around the world. Then a certain number will respond and say, okay, we want to see your book. And so you could either send them, you know, a copy of the book, a hard copy, or you could send the PDF. Personally, I don't like to send PDFs because I don't want to lose control over over them. So I I offer the agents, well, I'll send you as many copies as you need. And they usually ask for like three or four copies. And then, you know, then they will go out and try to sell your book to the, to the publishers in their country. And the, and the advantage is, of course, they have a relationship with the publishers. They know that what each publisher is looking for. And so that that really gives your book credibility that this agent is taking it on. And, and that's, and then, you know, then you get offers and, and then they get published and you get all kinds of neat books like like uh, yeah this is a book that was published in uh poland and uh in greece and uh china and, like it's amazing to see the, what the the book being published in all these different countries it's a thing that here i thought it was just for me and my friends but it's making a difference around the world Mm -hmm. That's awesome. So what do, can you give us some insight into like what these deals look like? Like, you know, how big are the offers? How, how are they structured? How does the, how does you as the author slash publisher actually get paid? Okay. So it's a, you, it's a pretty standard, it's pretty common. So you get an advance on royalties and you know, generally the, the wealthier the country, the bigger the advance, right? So, you know, I, I, I sold some rights to, you know, countries in Asia for like a few hundred dollars or, you know, big European, you know, wealthier European countries for a few thousand. And so it seems generally reflects, like in India, my book is selling for like $2. So you don't get much out of that. Um, but in, in, in European countries, you get more. So so let me tell you, so the most, the, uh, the contracts is just for the right to publish your book uh, in that language, in their country. It doesn't include any subsidiary rights, like no movie rights, no serial rights. You retain all the other rights. and. And once you earn, like a standard contract, once you earn back the um, the advance, they, they pay, they uh, start paying you royalties. They're supposed to, and uh, like one thing I could say is like, you're, some of these folks really got to keep after them because, you know, they don't, always, they're not always so good at keep, <laughs> keeping tabs and sending you royalty statements, but, some, but and some they are. So, but the main thing is, you, you know, it's an advance of royalties and uh, often like, like what I've done and what most people tell me to do is 
figure out, like they'll tell you in their offer, they will tell you uh, how many copies are going to print, what will be the retail price, and a percentage of, uh, of royalties, right? So what you do is just multiply, take, say, okay, they're going to print a thousand copies and let's say uh, sell it for the equivalent of five dollars US and they're going to give you, let's say, a eight percent royalty. Figure out what would be the total royalty for the first printing and just ask for that as the advance. And that's pretty standard that, that they would be willing to pay that amount. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. That's great. So uh, what are the, the kind of the royalty rates that you're usually seeing for these books? Like 7%? Yeah, 7 100%. It's usually like 7 8% because um, they have to pay, you know, they have to, they have to pay for the translation, right? They're, they're paying for the translation to the translator to do the translation. So you figure about seven, 8% and often, um, you know, considering they, they figure the cost of the translation, they figured in, in the, um, you know, the first printing that should cover that cost. So it's reasonable to say, you know, to ask, let's say they owe you 8% for the first, let's say 3000 to say, okay, I'll accept that. But, for the next, you know, all, all the copies after that, I would like 10%. And, uh, and, and you know, so usually they'll agree. I mean, you got to, it's like everything is a negotiation, but that's a reasonable thing to ask that it go up after the first printing for the, for the second printing and, and subsequent printings. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. So how, how long have you been um, selling the rights to this book and have you had books go on to multiple printings in other languages? Yeah, in some countries it's gone on to multiple printings. It's, you know, part of the challenge is they're really keeping track of, uh, you, you know, uh, it, you know, people say, take the money and run. It's like, it's hard. Some, some of the publishers, you, you know, you write to them, they don't respond because <laughs> you're dealing, you know, even though in the contract, there's usually a clause that says, you know, you can hire, have your agent do an audit of their books. You know, what are you going to send someone to Vietnam or to <laughs> Thailand to audit books? So, it, it, it's hard to know, but I know in some countries, like in Nigeria, they um, they sent me the uh, copy of the second printing because they actually used a different cover. And, and, and I think in, in uh, I'm not really sure of the others, but I know in Nigeria it's gone into at least one second printing. Oh, I think in Slovenia too. Yeah, it's. Uh, I mean, it's exciting. It's a feeling of hey, the book is selling. I mean, just think it's something I sat here and wrote, and people in Ukraine are reading. People in uh, Latvia are reading it and, and it's making a difference in their lives. It's a really a great feeling. You know, we all want to feel like we're making a difference in the world. We're, we all talk about wanting to change the world. You know, writing a book and selling foreign rights is really, hey, you're, you're reaching out to the world and you're making a difference. It's a great feeling. Mm, absolutely. So have you had success with your other books? I know you sold, um, you know, uh, this one book uh, in 24 different languages, but have you had success with your other books as well? Well, the other books are, are really about a local outdoor guides like I'm in Canada and one's about hiking in Canada one's about bicycling so I haven't it's, it's not really suited to uh, like the international market it's so that's what people uh, and that's actually before you you start this whole exercise you know ask yourself is this a book that would appeal to other markets I mean if it's a local guide to your 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 city probably not but if it's you know a lot of people write books they've had you know experiences they've they've learned a few things about life that they want to share with other people. You know, there's a lot of books like that. And that's the kind of book that really appeals to the, and everybody wants to learn everybody, you, you know, if you have some insights that you can share that will help people, that's the kind of book that people are other countries want to read. You know, one thing, you know, one thing I discovered is, you know, people, you know, cultures are different all around the world, but really human nature is the same. We all have the same, you know, concerns, the same insecurities, the same fears, the same wondering, confusion about, you know, like my book, I realize a lot of men are unsure of their role as, as men in relationships. It's like, and it's common. It's, and so if you can appeal to that, like it's a common feeling that people feel around the world, no matter what culture they come from. So if you have a book that appeals to that, you know, it, it's perfect for selling to, uh, you know, foreign markets. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So that makes sense. So, you know, definitely want to make sure that your book is going to be a good fit for foreign markets. Um, Absolutely. That, that, that's really the first thing. Ask yourself, is this a good book for the foreign markets? But don't hold yourself back because you might think like, I, like initially I thought this book was really not just for North American men. You know, men in other countries aren't like this, but I would, I had to realize, yeah, no, it's, it's, it, it's, it, it's something that can be sold around the world. It's uh, 
Definitely. So I'm, I'm assuming though, I mean, if you did reach out to agents and maybe your book was just not a good fit for international markets, I'm sure those agents would probably write back like, Hey, this is probably just not a good fit for our market. And you'd probably learn pretty quickly. Yeah, of course, of course. Or else they won't write back at all. <laughs> right. Yeah. You might just not hear back from them at all. Yeah. No, but no, it's, I mean, it's obvious like some things, some things fit for, for my something if it's really definitely that's only suited, you know, if you're writing a history of your hometown, you know, they're probably not going to be interested in uh, Serbia or Croatia unless there's a connection, uh, you know, but uh, otherwise, you know, think about it. It's a lot of people writing books today. They've gained experience. They've, they've learned a few things. They want to share their experience. You know, people do that. And like in my own book, and the same thing is like, if you went through a difficult experience, a challenge, and you think, well, it will make this experience more meaningful if I can share it with other people. Then, then that's the kind of book that people are interested in reading. Hmm. Absolutely. So, have you made any mistakes about this process that you know, looking back, you wish you know when you started out, you hadn't you know done that or gone down that route? Well, that's a good question. One thing that I, you know, uh, one mistake I made is, and I I did this several times, and every time I did it, I regretted it. Was sometimes an agent will ask for exclusive rights. Uh, for their country, you know, in the United States and, and Canada, it's pretty common that an agent will say, "Well, you, you know, I want to represent you exclusively." But in foreign markets, you can have several agents, uh, uh, you know, try, you know, representing your book. Like, like it happens in Japan and Korea. I remember we had several agents. So I, every time, but you know, it happened several times. An agent would say, "Well, I'll represent you if uh, I, you know, you give it to me exclusively," and at that point, I remember each time, well, they're the only one from that country that has offered to do it. So I'll say yes. And then in the end, you know, I, I just, it just, did, it just didn't work. I remember one agent, you know, I gave her exclusivity and then she just wasn't big on following up. I remember I said, I kept saying, well, you sent it all these, these publishers follow up and okay. And then because she followed up, we didn't get a deal. I mean, but, oh, you know what happened? She followed up. I remember that, and the publisher said, well, they didn't receive the book because I had sent it, mailed them the book directly. So because we followed up, you know, the, we found the publisher didn't get the book. We sent them the book, and they, and they made an offer, and they published it. That was, that was in Romania. So it's like, you know, sometimes if you give someone exclusivity, they may not be thinking the same way you're thinking. You know, it's, it's – uh, and then I remember I, another agent, they, I said to them, okay, well, I'll give you exc exclusivity. But if you decide that you know you're going to stop trying to market the book, tell me, right? It's like because sometimes they just stop marketing; they don't do anything. So I said, "Tell me, okay." She so said she would, but then I didn't hear for a long time, and then I kept emailing her, and then, well, I, yeah, at some point, I said, "Well, you know, if I've written you like three, you know, four, four or five emails after th over three months, and you haven't responded, that says to me you're not representing the book anymore." So I, I, you know, found another agent, and they they sold the book. So anyway, that's what I'm saying. Just be careful. In my preference, if somebody says they want exclusivity, you know, think think about it. You know, don't just agree automatically. Mm -hmm. Right? Because yeah, there. Are, I mean, there's lots of these agents in other countries. So um, yeah, you yeah, get a big benefit from giving one of the agents exclusivity, right? Exactly. Especially if they might just decide to drop your. You know, they they they've tried like five six publishers. Nobody was interested, and they say, okay, well, I'm not going to bother anymore. But they don't even tell you. So anyway, that. That, that's that's uh, that's one thing I I, I I you know I would do differently now. If somebody wants, uh, you know, no exclusivity for me personally. That has been my approach. Hmm. Absolutely, that's that's great advice. It's a good lesson to learn for sure. Yeah. So, what has been your kind of like biggest uh, excitement or biggest blessing of the, all doing all these international deals? What has been like the funnest part of it for you? I think it's. Uh, you know, I actually meet people who who uh, saw my book in a foreign country. <laughs> like someone was in uh, the Ukraine, and they said to me, well, "You know, I saw your book at the airport, <laughs> and uh, wherever they were in Kiev." I said, "Oh wow, <laughs> it's exciting." You know, the exciting is just the feeling that people, like you know, like the book is in China and Taiwan. Just think, people in those countries, like they're so far away, they're so distant yet. The, what I wrote is having an impact in life. It's 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 exciting. It's exciting. You know, when you get uh, an email from someone in uh, Curacao who's read my book and 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 uh, it's making a difference to him, and he says, you know, I'm applying these life lessons to uh, 
and it's it's making a difference. That it, it's exciting. It, it's you know, it, I think we all get a get a thrill. We we're able to make a difference. We're able to make a person you know people's lives better. That's that that's that's really it. We're able to make a difference around the world. Hmm. Absolutely. That's awesome. So uh, I want to make this like really easy for everyone listening um, to actually, you know, follow your process to actually find all those agents and send out those emails and so forth. So I'm wondering if in the show notes, we could leave um, some of the links to the sites, like the Simon Schuster site for agents like that you mentioned. So people can just kind of have those lists available uh, in the show notes at publishingprofitspodcast.com. And then uh, also um, maybe like a sample email that you sent before or kind of sample email um, if people could use to actually send to agents to actually pitch their titles. I think that'd be really helpful. Okay, sure, sure. I'd be happy to. It's uh, Or if people want to write to me and have questions, uh, uh, they could write to me and they could email me. Yeah, I'd be happy to help people. Yeah, absolutely. So where can people reach out to you, Elliot, and, and contact you? And okay, learn more well, my you? website is www.elliotcats.com. It's E-L-L-I-O-T-T-K-A-T-Z.com or Z in the United States. <laughs> it's K-A-T-Z. Dot com and um, yeah or and or my email is Elliot E L L I O T T R K A T Z at AOL dot com. Just write to me. I you know people have written to me about with questions, and I'm happy to help because you know it, it's really not, it's an exciting opportunity to make a difference and and the publishers in other countries are looking for good stuff. It's it's a win win for everybody. Hmm, absolutely. Well, we'll make sure to link all those resources in the show notes at publishingprofitspodcast.com. dot com. Elliot, just thank you so much for being here and sharing your wisdom experience with us. I really appreciate it. Okay, it's great to be here, Tom. Thanks for having me. Thank you.